Okay, hi Skylar, hi Aubrey. So today we're doing the basic, um, just like a first aid patch. Just so you know, every level does have their own first aid badge. So some of the stuff that we're gonna do today is things that you can um, use towards finishing that badge if you want to, so that's kind of cool today. Hi Caitlin, hi Janine, hi West Virginia, hi Sophie. There's so many fun, yay! This is so fun, we got people from all over. Nice, hi Addy, hi Ellie. Okay, so we are gonna do a couple things today. I actually have a uh, assistant today, so you're gonna wanna make sure you either have a parent or a sibling, someone that's gonna let you put a bandage on them. Um, and if you don't have that, you can use like a stuffed animal or you can use a doll or what have you, okay? Um, but we'll be getting into that in a minute. Hi, Liz. Hi, Johnstown. Colorado. Hi, Colorado. <laughs> Hi. I'm looking down at the chat. That's what I'm looking at. Nice. So many fun things happening right now. Okay, so let's first start with... So if you were on the live that I did on Tuesday, we were talking about like emergency preparedness um, and just all kinds of different things with, to do with emergencies and disaster preparedness, being prepared. So this basic first aid, um, the, thing that was, the things that we're going to talk about the most is being prepared to be able to do certain things. So we're kind of adding on to what we talked about um, the other day. Um, and if you weren't here, that's fine. You can watch all of them. We have them loaded up, and I'll have them put in the chat where you can see other lives if you missed them. Um, happy birthday! Okay, so one of the, the first thing that I want to talk about when we're talking about first aid, when we're talking about any of those things, the main question we always want to make sure to know is if the emergency is non life threatening or life-threatening. So what is the difference between a non-life-threatening emergency and a life-threatening emergency? What is the difference? Yes, Sarah, you can do it tomorrow if you can't um, attend tonight. It's It will be available for you to watch it back. Um, all the lives that we did are available for you to watch it out. But hi, Fran. <laughs> I'll have them um, put in the chat where you can watch those. But if you go on the Facebook page, um, the videos that we've done so far are there. And I'm pretty sure that they're on our GSWPA YouTube channel as well. Um, but you don't have to say if you can't. There you go. It'll be posted for us on the Facebook and the YouTube. Hi, Kylie. Hi, Jill. Yes, you're right. So if it's life-threatening, Christine, somebody could die, they could pass away, okay? And then if it's non-life-threatening, they are probably not going to die, but could they be really hurt? Could they be really hurt? Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi, Christy. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Rhode Island. So right now we're talking about life-threatening threatening versus non-life-threatening emergencies. We are going to be practicing calling 911, and that is one of the things they are going to ask you is um, whether it's a – yes, good. Um, so non so this is an example. A non-life-threatening is like getting scratch, scratched by your cat, and life-threatening could be a car accident. That's a great um, example. Ariana, you could be really hurt by getting scratched, scratched by a cat. Um, Life-threatening is something you could get permanently hurt, and non-life-threatening won't hurt you as much. Good job. Good job. Okay, so now that we know the difference between life-threatening and non-life-threatening, let's talk about um, how to call 911. So what is... 911. Thank you, Gina. Hi, Albion. Hi, Lily. 
What is 911? What is it? Why would you call it? What is it for? 911. Hi, Samantha. Yes, so 911 is the police phone number. So that's yes and no. Um, you can have a non-emergency number where you're actually calling a specific police station, um, but 911 is, is an emergency call, right? So it's for emergencies. You're going to, yes, thank you, April. It's like an emergency helpline. And so that's why you have to know all of the different things that they're going to ask you um, so that they can determine, do you need police do you need the ambulance? Do you need a fire department? Do you need some of them, all of them? Okay, so let's practice um, calling 911. So I made this little chart. There we go. So these are some of the things that you're going to want to know when you call 911. So they're going to ask you. Most likely, they're going to ask you what your emergency is, and they may ask you right away if it's life-threatening or non-life-threatening, okay? Um, but they're going to want to know what your name is. They're going to want to know a phone number. Why do you think they want it? If you're calling, why do they want your phone number? If you're calling, why do you think that you need to have a phone number? Hi, New Jersey. Yes, and it's the first responder's phone number. If you are calling 911, why do you think that you have to have your phone number or a phone number that they can reach you on? Yes, April, in case they need to call you back, especially if you are on a cell phone, potentially that cell phone could get disconnected. Um, and you want to make sure that they can call you back if they need to. Right. So sometimes sometimes you might be, you know, so kind of nervous and scared that you might accidentally hang up. Um yeah, yes, Simone, yes, Jennifer, so that you can so they can call you back if needed. Okay. So um we're going to want to know the name, the phone number, and then what's the emergency. So if the emergency is, hi, Sophia, if the emergency is that someone um, fell down, um, if they're bleeding, if maybe there's like a fire in the kitchen, um, whatever the emergency is, you need to be able to tell them what the emergency is. The next thing is they may ask you some details about what happened, okay? So if you just say there's a fire and then that's all you say, they're going to need to know, like, what happened? Do you know how the fire started? Is it just in the kitchen? Is it in the whole house? Are you in the house? So they're going to be asking you a lot of what's called follow-up questions. And the most important thing, if you have to call 911, the most important thing is to stay as calm as you can. And I know it, it's going to be a, a situation where you're scared, but you they're there to help you. So you need to stay as calm as you can and answer any questions that they ask you. But you want to just answer the question that they ask you, okay, so that they can get the information out to the people that need the information. Okay, so they may ask you who's hurt. Uh, how many people are hurt? They may, uh, and they're going to ask you where you are. Usually, they'll ask you earlier in the call. Um, they may ask you where, what your address is, what the address is where you're at, the location. Bye, Jennifer. Bye. Um, if you don't know the exact address, try to see if you can ask someone. Okay. Or give them as much information as possible. So if you don't know the exact address, but you see that there is like a McDonald's um, down the street and that you're at a red light and um, or that all of the houses are apartments um, and not houses or, oh, my school is right next door. Like as much information as you can give them, 
is really, really good. Okay. Then, um, so they may ask if the person who is hurt is conscious. What does the word conscious mean? What does conscious mean? What does the word conscious mean? Hi, Leah. Yes, conscious means still awake, April. Good job. Um, Charlene says that they're awake and aware. Emily says they're breathing. Debbie, awake. Okay, so if somebody's conscious, it means, so for instance, if I fall down and maybe I break my leg, but I can still talk to you, I can still answer your questions, I'm still breathing, I'm still aware, that's conscious. So what does it mean when somebody's not conscious? Yes, Abigail. That means they're not awake. They're not able to talk to you, okay? They're not able to interact, right? So good job, Christy. They're either awake, responding, and talking, or they're not, okay? So on the call, they'll probably ask you if they are conscious or not. And then um, they... Potentially will ask you what is being done to help. So, for instance, they may ask if someone is already starting first aid, if somebody is starting CPR. Um, so these are just some of the things that you're going to want to know when you're calling 911. So I want you to take a minute and be whoever's helping you out and your partner. I have this old phone that's like not not working or anything, um, but I'm going to practice calling 911. And I want you to practice calling 911. So uh, let's say that we're at a troop meeting and someone falls down and they have a cut on their leg and it's bleeding. Okay. So we're going to call 911. So we're going to get our phone and we're going to call 911. One thing I want to. Um, let you know this is something that you're going to want your parent um your guardian the person that takes care of you to teach you how to do on cell phones a lot of times like the truth is is we use our cell phones most often um what's the difference between a cell phone and a landline what is the difference between a cell phone and a landline do you know what a landline is <laughs> Hi, Jessa. What's the difference between a cell phone and a landline? Are we saying no, we don't know what a landline is? Does anyone know the difference between a cell phone and okay? So Yes, landline is our house phone. It's connected to the wall. Good job. Um, sometimes they can be cordless, but a landline is one that you can't walk around with it. You couldn't take the phone. If it's a landline, you couldn't take it off the wall and then, like, you know, go to school with it and still talk on it, okay? Um, good job, Charlene. Not transportable. Awesome. Um, so sometimes you will see landlines. Um, they're popular. Like you, they still have them at schools. They they have them at camp. Um, but you may you may or may not use a landline. Okay. So if for for instance you're using a cell phone and it's not your cell phone, sometimes people put code pass codes on their phone, right? So. After we're all done, I would like you to ask an adult to show you how to, even if like, say, for instance, I get hurt and you have to use my phone and it has a passcode and I can't give you the code, there is a button that you can push on different phones. All the phones are different, but there's a button that you can push where you can call an emergency number even if you don't have the passcode. So that's something to keep in mind. Even if the phone is locked, you don't have to worry about that because you can always call 911, okay?
You can call 911 even if the phone is turned off, like it doesn't have cellular service. Um, okay, so we're going to call 911. Okay, so we're going to push 911 on our phone. We're going to listen, okay, and they're going to ask us our name. So I'm going to say this is Miss Tia. Um, the phone number, I'm going to give the phone number of the cell phone. If you are near a landline and you know that phone number, I would also give them the landline phone number just in case something happens with the cell phone. Okay. Yes, there is an emergency feature on the phone. So all the phones are different. So that's just a question that I would like you to ask. Okay, so they're going to say, what's the emergency? The emergency is Miss Tia fell down and she's cut and her leg is bleeding. Okay, and then they're going to say, what happened? We were playing a game. She ran, she tripped, and when she looked down, her leg was bleeding. And then they're going to say, who's hurt? Just Miss Tia, no one else is hurt. Where are they? They're sitting in the yard. They haven't moved. Are they conscious? Yes, my name is Miss Tia Wendy. So are they conscious? Yes, they are. And what is being done to help? My troop leader is giving her first aid. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute to practice yourself using this. I'm going to leave this up here so that you can pretend to call 911. Okay. All right, if you're still practicing, you can pause this. So now we've talked about calling 911. Let's put this to the side here. Okay. I'll let you know when I need you. Oh, you love being in Girl Scouts. Awesome. Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about is um, so we talked about threatening versus non-threatening. Okay, so we can do that. Then we talked about how to call 911 and what we should say for 911. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about a first aid kit and we're going to make our own little first aid kit. Okay. So what are some things that you think we should have in a first aid kit? Now I have a bunch of stuff here and I'm going to make my own little first aid kit out of this. Um, this was one of those Girl Scout tins. I think it had like mints or something in it um from the product sales and I thought well this would be a great the lid secures is pretty secure and it has this like little sort of strap on it so this is what I'm going to make my little first aid kit and then I'm going to put it in my car so I'm going to put my first aid kit I'm going to get it ready so band-aids all right so let's find some band-aids I got all kinds of stuff here All right, so here's some Band-Aids. So I'm gonna put some Band-Aids in. What are Band-Aids for? What do we have Band-Aids for? I feel like I should have more Band-Aids. Oh, here we go, okay. I was like, that's not a lot of Band-Aids. Okay, so here's some Band-Aids, and what are Band-Aids for? Shailene asks, have I ever had to call 911? I have called 911. Um, yes, I have. I had to call 911 when someone um, actually got in a car accident in front of my house. Um, and I also think I called 911 once when um, I used to work for 4H, and some one of our uh, leaders had a seizure. So I had to call 911 for that. Okay, so we, we have a great list going. So we have Band-Aids, 
gloves. I do think I have some gloves in here. Band-Aids, gloves. Okay, let me look for the gloves because I, I know that I have them. Someone said Neosporin. Did someone say Neosporin? And gauze, I have gauze. So these are some gauze pads. I'm pretty sure these are like the, yeah. So these gauze pads are like individually wrapped. Okay, so I have Band-Aids in my first aid kit. I have gauze. Um. This is an antiseptic towelette, so it's kind of like, someone said peroxide, um, so it's it's kind of like peroxide, but it's like in its own little pouch, so we're going to put that in there. Um, what else do I have in here? We need antiseptic. We need, oh, this is first aid and burn cream, so I'm going to put that in there. Do we have Neosporin? See, this exercise is always good if you already have a first aid kit to kind of go through it and see, like, do you have everything you actually need? Okay, gloves. I found gloves. Okay, so here's some gloves. So I'm going to put that in the first aid kit. All right, so I have Band-Aids. I have gloves. I have gauze. Um, Neosporin, disinfection wipe and sanitizer wipe, I have that. Okay. Um, oh, Emily has the same tin. Awesome. Alcohol wipes. A mask. I don't have a disposable mask in this one, but, but that's a good idea. Oh, I was looking all over for the gloves. They're right here in front of me. Ugh, 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 ugh. Tape, oh yes. So if you have gauze, especially if you have like this big um, like gauze that you can unroll, you might need tape. Um, I'm gonna actually show you how you can use the gauze without using tape. But here I have some tape. Masks. Um, a small bottle of water to wash the cut. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to have to put that on my list because I don't have that right here. Tweezers. What, what, what are tweezers for? What are tweezers for? Tweezers. Little scissors. I have little scissors. Got the tape. Mm-hmm. Ointment. I got the medical tape. Hard candy. Yes. Let me grab my hard candy. Okay. Got my hard candies. Putting that in there. Anti-itch cream. Tweezers. A little notebook and a pen. That's actually a really good idea. Ace bandage. Do I have an ace bandage? <laughs> I may need to get an ace bandage. Okay. Looks like my first aid kit needs a little bit of work, but that's fine because that's that's good what we're doing here. Yeah, so the tweezers are good for like if someone has a tick, um, splinters, bee stings. So the hard candies are good um, for sometimes if someone was having, like if they had uh, diabetes or something. Um, that's what that would be good for. So on our list, on the list I have Band-Aids, alcohol pads, oh, a note card or a post-it. So that was the notebook and the pen idea. Um, a little tin container, so we have that. Antiseptic ointment or pad. A sucker or hard candy. Ooh, hand sanitizer. I just saw a hand sanitizer. Where is it? I'll add that to the list. Gauze, safety pin, Q-tip, and a cotton ball. Okay? So those are some of the things. So I made my little kit, 
And then I'm just going to um, highlight some of the things that I still need to put in it. And then I can put my little lid on. And then I can keep this in the car, even like under my car seat or in my glove box. And then I'll have it. Okay. So I'm going to give you a second. Why a notebook and a pen? Okay, so I actually would put like a little post-it pad, unless you have one of those like mini notebooks. Um, that can be good in a first aid kit. For instance, um, if like maybe you don't have a cell phone right with you and you need to write down information so when you um, go to call 911, okay? Um, it could also be if potentially you are the person that is hurt um, they can write and they're conscious, but they can't talk for some reason. Um, they can write the answers down for you. Okay. So, Christy, an EpiPen is really important if for allergies. I would say, like, we're just talking about a little mini first aid kit. In your large first aid kit, yes, you should have that. Um, and I also feel like in your little travel first aid kit, an EpiPen is good as if you're someone that has allergies or you have someone around you that has allergies. Um, things are all getting in my face. I'm just reading some of your responses. And yes, also the candies are good if your stomach is upset. Flashlight, yes, we talked about that on Tuesday. We want to put a mini flashlight in here. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to give you a second to get your little first aid kit together, and then we are going to move on um, to the next step. And we're just going to sort of go over how this would all work with the first aid kit in 911, and then we are going to practice doing a few first aid techniques. All right, I got too much stuff in front of me. So for the techniques, we're going to want a, a gauze pad. Um, I feel like I lost my gauze pad. Okay, a little gauze pad, um, an ace bandage or the rolled gauze. And we're going to want an antiseptic wipe or some kind of peroxide or something. And a Band-Aid. Okay. So you're going to want the two gauzes, the antiseptic wipe, and the band-aid. So if you want to get all that together, okay. So if there is an emergency, um, we there's a little uh, technique with three C's called check, call, and care. Okay, so I have this little thing. So we have check, call, and care. So the first thing we want to do is to check the scene. So we want to check the scene. What are we checking for? So if I come up and someone has fallen down and they are bleeding, what are we checking around for? Christy, um, what you're going to need is a gauze pad, the rolled gauze, an antiseptic, and a Band-Aid. We're going to get there in just a minute, and I'll go over those things one more time. But when you're checking the scene, what are we checking for? What are we checking for? We're checking for safety, consciousness, good. Yes, we're checking for immediate danger, any danger. So if you see someone, yes, we're checking around for what happened. If you see someone fell down, we don't want to just run up and try to help them without looking to see if we would fall and trip over what maybe they tripped over. Good. 
Okay, so we're checking the scene. We see that it's safe for us to walk up, and then the next thing we need to do is call or have someone call 911. Okay, so ideally, we would want one person to stay with whoever's hurt and then another person to go call 911. Okay, if you are asking someone to go call 911 and there's more than one person there, Make sure that you make eye contact with the person because everybody's going to be like jazzed up. Everybody's going to be scared. You can't just say, somebody call 911 because then people may think that another person's calling 911. So um, if, if I'm he helping someone, my son's name Avery, so if I'm helping someone, I'd be like, Avery, I'd look right at him and say, Avery, go call 911. So that he knows that he's the one that's supposed to call 911. Okay? Okay. So we've checked the scene. All right. We have called or is having someone call 911. And then I said give appropriate staff meeting. I don't know why I said staff meeting. That's what happens when you're doing everything at home. So you want to give appropriate care. I have no idea why I put staff meeting. Ugh. So we want to give appropriate care. So check call care. Check the scene. Make sure it's safe for us to approach. Call or have someone call 911. And then give the appropriate care care. Okay. All right, so now we are going to test, learn some techniques and test them. Okay. Um, so, so far we have learned what a, a, a non-emergency and emerg or a Life-threatening and a non-life-threatening emergency is. We've learned that. We've learned how to call 911 and some of the questions that they might ask. We talked about the first aid kit and some of the things that were in the first aid kit. And we built a little mini first aid kit. And then we learned the check, call, care. Okay, so we learned to check the scene to make sure we can approach and that it's not going to hurt us. We learned to call 911 or have someone call 911. And then we need to um, give appropriate care. Okay. All right. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to practice doing a first aid. So the first two things I want you to have is to have your antiseptic towelette or if you have um can you eat the candy in your first aid in your first aid kit well ideally you need to not eat the candy you're going to want to have it in there in case of emergency but if you have extra candy you can ask if you are allowed to eat that okay so we want our antiseptic towelette if you don't have one of these and you have peroxide and a cotton ball, that's fine. And you're gonna want a Band-Aid. So I'm gonna use my assistant, who's gonna assist me with his arm. And I am going to um, pretend that he has a cut on himself. And I just wanna remind everybody that um, we love interaction, uh, but the chat box is just for questions um, and comments, okay? So we don't want to clog up the chat box because there's a lot of people watching and they want to be able to ask their questions, okay? You want us to be told a joke? I'm not really sure what joke I can tell you right now because right now we're talking about first aid and that's not a joke, that's serious, right? Okay, so I'm going to take my, I'm going to pretend that he is cut. Okay, so he's cut here, cut. 
and I am going to use my antiseptic towelette. Now, ideally, I would have gloves on, and I am going to clean the area, okay, and then the side that I used, I'm going to make sure that I don't use that again. Clean the area, okay, and then I'm going to set that aside. Then I am going to, can you hold your arm up? Um, open up my bandage, and if you open up the bandage, you can see that I'm not actually touching the bandage. You can see that that flap will come up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bandage with the flaps up, okay, and just touch the flap. I'm not going to touch the bandage part. And I'm going to hold it by the flaps so that when I put it on his arm, I'm going to put the padded part of the bandaid on the cut and then just pull back on the sides. And then there you go. And then it's you don't have to worry about um, getting any dirt or anything in it. Okay. They do have um, camping first aid or outdoor first aid programs. We're not really talking about that today. Okay, so then there's a Band-Aid, all right? So I want you to practice doing that. You can take it off. All right, throw these out and then I'll get the gauze pads. Okay, next. What we want is the gauze pad, and we want the rolled, it's like a long gauze or a ace bandage. So let me get some gloves on, because I should have actually had gloves on, so that was, that was my fault. I apologize. And then I'll also show you the right way to take gloves off. All right. So. Pull this up. I'm going to put my gloves on. Because we are going to take care of his arm. He got hurt on his arm. For pretend, but for practicing. Why is it important for us to practice first aid? If nobody's really hurt, why do we need to practice first aid? Why do we need to practice first aid? Why do we need to practice first aid? Does anyone know why we're practicing first aid? Right, so we know what to do when something happens and so that we are prepared. And um, yeah, so we know what to do in an emergency. Sometimes when you practice, yeah, it helps because emergencies can be scary and we might um, be nervous. So if you practice it, you'll know more and it'll be a lot easier. Yeah, and we're being prepared. Okay, so I'm gonna take my gauze pad and I'm going to open up the gauze pad, okay? And I'm gonna place it on his cut. We'll say his cut. Yes, good, good, good. So you don't get scared when someone is actually hurt. So I'm putting the gauze pad there, okay? So I'm placing it on the cut. Then I have my rolled, it's like everything's called gauze. <laughs> gauze is just the material. So I have my like rolled gauze strip, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, there we go. I'm gonna put the gauze over top of where I put the gauze pad. Right, so we practice in case of emergency. Then I'm gonna roll this around. And I'm just going to keep rolling it around until it covers the square pad and it also covers the area that's hurt. So 
So we just keep rolling it around until you get to the end. And then once we get to the end, there's two things we want to do before we finish. The first thing is I'm going to um, ask him if this is too tight or too loose. Is this too tight? I'm going to ask him to squeeze my hand and make sure that he can still squeeze my hand to make sure that it's not too tight and I didn't cut off the circulation. Okay. And then you can either keep using the gauze and then use the tape if you have it. If you don't have tape, I'm going to show you how to um, tie this if you don't have tape. So what you're going to do is I'm going to make I'm going to make one bunny ear loop. Okay? So I made one bunny ear loop. Just step in just a little bit. Okay. One bunny ear loop. Then I'm going to take the side that's hanging down from the bunny ear loop and I'm going to bring it up. And then I'm just going to tie it like I would tie my shoe like that. And then it's tied off. So let me show you one more time. Just try to bend it like that. Oh. There you go, that's fine. So again, I have my long end, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take part of it, and I'm going to make a bunny ear loop. Okay? Then I'm going to take the loose part and pull it around to the opposite side of the bunny ear loop. And then I'm just going to tie this like I would tie a shoe. And there you go. Okay, you can take this off. Okay, so then I have my gloves. I just helped somebody, you know, you don't want to make sure that you don't get contaminated. So what you do is you take two fingers, okay, and you hook it up under the edge of the glove. Just hook it up under there. And you pull the glove off so that it's inside out. So all of the germs and stuff are now in this. Okay. Then I take my free hand, take two fingers, I go up under this glove, and I pull out inside out over top of the other glove so that all the stuff is inside of these gloves. And then I dispose of them. Can you throw these out, please? Thank you. Okay, so what do we think about what we just learned? Do we have any questions about the things that I just showed you? Do we have any questions about what I just showed you? And don't forget that there is... Um, there's badges for each of the levels, so you can continue to learn even more about first aid. Um, you can get, there's first aid classes, or CPR classes. For some of our older girls, we have a babysitter training certification, which is going to go over all of this stuff. Okay. Do you feel comfortable now? being able to call 911 and be able to answer the questions that they are going to ask you. So after today with this first aid patch, you should be able to know the difference between a life-threatening and a non-life-threatening emergency. You should also be able to call 911 and when we call 911, we're going to want to make sure that we know the name, the phone number, what the emergency is, what happened, who's hurt and how many people are hurt, where everyone is, if they are conscious, and what is being done to help. Um, and then we are we learned the check care call which is to check the scene to make sure that it is um, safe enough for us to approach, okay? Um, you can call 911 or have someone call 911, and then we can give appropriate care, okay? 
And we also learned how to use an antiseptic pad and a Band-Aid for a minor cut. And we also learned how to use um, a gauze pad and a gauze roll for a bigger cut. And we also learned how to take gloves off appropriately. I'm not sure um, in terms of what do you do if someone throws up. I'm not sure what how to answer that in terms of the first aid that we're talking about. Um, and then we also made our mini first aid kit and we talked about the things in the kit, okay? So those are the things that you needed to know for this basic first aid patch. Please don't forget that you can earn badges in first aid and you'll learn more techniques. So you can go to our GSWPA website and look at the badge explorer for that. Okay. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us on this virtual patch program. Um, don't forget that this, you can watch this back if you want to, either on our GSWPA Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Um, we also have a bunch of other virtual patch programs available. We have them coming up. Um, and I want to thank all of you for coming. And I hope you have a great evening. And we will see you on our next virtual patch program. Bye. Bye, Gina. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, Yvonne. Bye, Betsy. Bye, Sean. Oh, I'm glad, Charlene. I'm glad you like the bunny loop tie thing. That's always a good one. Bye, Courtney. Bye, Jill. Bye, Debbie. Bye, Carolyn. Have a good night, Stacy. See you. Bye. Oh, your unicorn is all fixed up. Good. Bye, Jill. Bye, Tara. Have a great night, everybody. See ya.